Uh, Clay's dad's going to be on in a little bit. Check this out. Dibs, what do you think? W- would, would Clay, would he actually go? This is about why he's not thinking about free agency yet, but listen to the words he chooses from the Draymond Green show via the volume. I just can't believe it's here. Like, in your mid-20s, it's so crazy. You think you're going to play forever, really. And you think you just maintain that athletic level that seems effortless. Oh, but then as time goes on, you really do realize how demanding this job really is. And it's so physically demanding. I was actually struggling with that a lot at the beginning of this year because of the unknown, you know? I mean, I might have let contract situations or playing time or just using, making up a lot of excuses rather than just appreciating what is in front of me and it took me and steve like four real heart-to-heart talks to finally break my shell being like you know what i gotta have fun this year i deserve to have fun like we work so hard to freaking win these games and play into june and have fans on the road i mean my first couple years there might be a few staff curry jerseys in the crowd now it's like a whole contingent of warrior fans on the road it's insane okay so Let's break apart what Clay just said there. First of all, he says, I can't believe it's here. Yeah. He's talking about free agency. Um, Says it took him four heart-to-heart talks with Steve Kerr to stop letting both contractual situations and playing time bother him. So those were getting to him, which to me means the playing time thing is a story we know because we can see it. Yep. And it seems to be rectified. The contractual situation is behind the scenes. We can't see it. And if he was mad about it earlier this year, I don't know why he wouldn't still be mad about it now. It sounds like he's just figured out how to compartmentalize it, right. put it in his back pocket, and hold it for whenever the offseason starts. And it feels like maybe he was mad about it before because of the reported, sourced reported, 2 and 48 that he got from the Warriors, two years, $48 million. And he probably was not not looking to sign that contract, and he was offended by that contract. And now you get to a spot later in the year where you've played, he's played better. And I would imagine that there will be an offer out there no greater doubt. than two years and $48 million. I would think, I would think, like in, in, a, in a capless world, he, he deserves more than that. Again, looking at the whole landscape of the NBA, Looking at what everybody makes, you don't think Clay Thompson's worth more than twenty-four million a year? But do you have to put context in there as a player? You don't have to, right? You don't have to. So, look, I don't know. I also, I also know this: he continually talks about staying in the present, enjoy right now. Right. Don't worry about later. You remember the last person with the Warriors who kept saying that to us? Was it Kevin Durant? It was not. It was much more recent than that. You don't remember the interview we did right before the season when someone looked at us directly, was sitting in front of us. Oh, that's right. And said, stay. Don't worry about next year. Don't worry about next year. Stay in the moment. That was Bob Myers. That was Bob Myers. Man, it feels like forever ago. He gone. Yep. He gone. So, listen. um, Clay said on the podcast, of course I want to remain with the Dubs. His dad, who joins us in seven minutes, has said publicly, once a dub, always a dub. He's not going anywhere. Has said that within the last few months. Has something changed? There's only one way for me to say that right now. Maybe. I do think it's possible. Even though, I mean, I said to you, uh, gosh, an hour ago, that I think there's next to zero chance that these guys aren't all back together again. It's because I do think that that's the option the Warriors are going to choose. But I am so in the dark and fascinated by the idea of whether or not Clay has gone through a mental journey this year that has led him to an openness to play somewhere else. Of course. And I think it's more than just this year. And I was looking at Clay's trajectory of his whole career. This is really the first time that he's been in this spot where free agency is going to happen for him because he got hurt against Toronto and the team immediately gave him a max contract, which he had earned through his great play through multiple championships. And then he got hurt again at the end of his rehab. And so he played, or he got paid for two years that he never played over $70 million for just get well soon money. 
And that's the way it goes. And so he plays out that contract, which ends here maybe in eight days or ten days from now. And he gets to be a free agent for the first time. So how could he not, at the very least, be open to the process at this juncture of his career? Gosh, you just said that, and that just went like, whew, that just sent a little shot up the spine there. Eight days. Well, the playing game is a week from tomorrow. Yeah. Eight S- days. Season could be over. Could be. In eight days. Or it could last for two and a half months and end in a parade. Somewhere in between eight days right. and ten weeks right. is what we have left. Right, right. And for the first time, it feels like the eight days is more likely than the ten weeks. And that's kind of what fans are, are, are grappling with because over the last ten years, it has felt almost like a birthright to have a deep run. Absolutely it's, it has. It's been every year but a couple, two or three. Oh, I don't. I think there are a lot of sports fans in this city. If that were to happen next week, they're not going to know what to do with themselves for a little while, right? Which you know, I kind of like after the Niner hangover. Well, I, I do feel like that absolutely was the case for a few weeks, where the 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 Super Bowl loss was too painful. It was too painful, and people will they were into the discussion for a day or two or three, and then they were like, "I need, I, I just, I need a moment." I mean, but that could that could happen next week. Um, if the Warriors don't uh, don't play well in in the play in tournament, that absolutely could happen next week. Um, curious situation though. I, I I just look at it this way. I I feel like some of the disappointment with Draymond Green and Clay Thompson stems from Warrior fans still putting them in those one, two, and three positions on the team, and maybe they feel that way too. You know, when Clay says to Dre, oh, we're not ourselves without you. We can't function without you. It's like, well, that's the evolution I want. I think people look at it and go, well, we could run it back. We're going to make major changes. Why isn't there a third option? Why can't you keep everybody and reshuffle the deck so that there isn't so much responsibility on these three guys? Depends on what Clay was signs for. Really? Yeah, that's part and of it. if you're asking Clay to who reportedly turned down two years and $48 million. If you're asking for that contract to be less than that, he's not going to take that if he already turned down two years and forty eight. But I don't just mean money. I obviously mean role as well. Right. right? I mean, obviously, Jonathan Kaminga's responsibility at a certain point is going to have to grow. Yeah, it already has. Yeah. But you're right. Going into the next year, it's got to grow even more. 